Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be my ectopic pregnancy scare story. I want to preface or put a disclaimer out there that I did not have an ectopic pregnancy, but I went through somewhat of a scary period with my first pregnancy where my physician thought I had an ectopic pregnancy and it was a whole ordeal. I put out a poll on my channel, it was probably two weeks ago, where I asked you guys if you'd be interested in hearing this story and an overwhelming amount of you said yes. So that is what I'm recording today. If you are new to my channel, I am pregnant with baby number two right now. He is due in two months and I have a 14 month old daughter. So this ectopic pregnancy scare is associated with her pregnancy. Prior to her did go through a miscarriage. We, my husband and I suffered a miscarriage at six weeks and I also filmed my miscarriage story. So if you wanna check that out, I'll link it in the description box and in the cards if you want to hear about my miscarriage story. Anyways, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and jump into what happened. So because I had suffered a miscarriage, my, actually let me back up further. My primary gynecologist does not deliver babies anymore. So because I was so attached to her and I didn't know she had an OB associated with her practice, I went somewhere else. And I had a really bad experience with them when it came to my miscarriage. So after the miscarriage happened, I called my gynecologist because they really didn't give me any answers as to why it had happened and like the cause behind it, which sometimes there really isn't a reason behind miscarriages. But nonetheless, I had called her, she got the files from my OB from the first pregnancy and then called me and mentioned, um, you know, when you're ready to get pregnant again, give me a call because as soon as you find out you're pregnant, I want you to come into our facility so we can draw your blood and check all your levels, like your progesterone and your HCG and things like that to make sure that your levels are um, high enough to carry a pregnancy. So we had suffered a miscarriage in August, I wanna say. No, it was September. We got pregnant in August. We had the miscarriage in September and then she said, wait one month and then you are good to try again for your next baby. So we got pregnant after the first cycle. So I called them and I had found out on a Sunday that I was pregnant. So first thing Monday morning, I called them to say that I got a positive pregnancy test and I was actually traveling for work at the time. So because I was traveling for work, I wasn't able to get in with them until Wednesday. And to top it all off, and this is an important thing to mention as well, it was actually the week of Thanksgiving. So it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And one of the OBs at that office was, or the only OB at that office was on vacation, but my gynecologist said, just go in, get your blood drawn so we can see where everything's at and we can get your levels checked out. So first thing Wednesday morning before I went into work, I just thought it was a routine thing. And because I've had my blood drawn so many times for various things at that office, I knew like exactly where the room was to get my blood drawn. So when they called me back, the woman said, okay, we're gonna go down to the hallway to the left and the room to get your blood drawn is to the right. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird, but I don't know any different, so I guess I'll just follow her. The woman that had taken me back was the ultrasound tech, and she pulled me into the ultrasound room, and another important thing I should mention, so I found out I was pregnant prior to even missing my period. I think I found out four days before my missed period, like it was a pretty significant amount of time before my missed period. So she had pulled me back and she said, okay, we're gonna do an ultrasound just to see like where the egg had implanted. And because I had gone through a miscarriage, I was very well educated, I guess, like self-educated in terms of like knowing that is way too early to be looking for anything on an ultrasound because you're not going to see anything. But again, going against my better judgment, I was like, okay, I guess I'll just let her do it. So 
she is doing a transvaginal ultrasound and she's looking around she is asking me a bunch of questions questions similar to when i had the miscarriage like have you experienced any cramping are you having any cramping right now have you had any spotting or bleeding at this point i'm by myself my husband isn't with me and i am starting to panic because i'm having flashbacks to my miscarriage i had just said to her like look i already had a miscarriage can you just shoot it to me straight like i am not here to be playing games if there's something going on just tell me and even though she shouldn't have said anything she said well it looks like you are having an ectopic pregnancy and i started panicking like full on anxiety attack basically because when you hear those words you automatically think the worst at least I did and oh it was such a horrible horrible feeling especially being there by myself because I just again wasn't expecting to have an ultrasound if I was going to have an ultrasound my husband would have been with me and it would have been a little bit of an easier pill to swallow I guess if that's what I was going to go through um so she's taking a bunch of pictures and she said, well, your gynecologist is in the middle of a surgery right now. She, I'm going to call her, tell her um, what I think is happening, and then she's going to look at your images and going to give you a call. So prior to leaving the office, they did draw me bl my blood. And of course, I'm sobbing hysterically. And I shouldn't have even honestly like driven out of the office or like driven home because it was so bad and they said well if you're having an ectopic pregnancy we need you to go to the hospital today to have a dnc depending on like how far along you are i'm like a dnc okay this is like whirlwind everything is like smacking me in the face right now like it's just such a surreal thing to go through so on my way home, my doctor, my gynecologist had called me and she said, okay, do you know what an ectopic pregnancy is? And she like, even though I knew what it was, she was explaining it to me in a very like calm, matter of fact way. And she said, well, before we do anything, I need you to go to the hospital in a few hours and I want you to have a repeat ultrasound because they have much more advanced equipment there and some other reasons i can't remember why but um they did like a the ultrasound i had at the office was probably like five seven minutes but the ultrasound i had at the hospital was like 20 minutes to half hour long went home of course i didn't go into work how could you after that and i sobbed my husband came home from work and i think i slept basically until my appointment like i couldn't even stay awake because I didn't want to deal with my emotions basically so I slept it off and then we woke up we went to the hospital together we had the ultrasound and I think one of the worst things and one of the things that like sticks out to me is when they take you into like the room or whoever whether it's like a nurse or an ultrasound tech or a doctor and they they have the paperwork and they have to ask you all of these questions like how many pregnancies have you had before um were they to the result in a live birth and it's like those little moments where if you've suffered a miscarriage before or if you've dealt with an ectopic pregnancy before or a stillbirth like those triggering moments where you have to fill out that paperwork like it's still so gut-wrenching so I remember her asking that and the poor girl she was probably like 21 22 like fresh out of school and I just started bawling my eyes out in front of her um telling her like my health history with the miscarriage and then thinking again that I'm about to go through an ectopic pregnancy. So I lay down. She, no joke, probably took hundreds of sonograms. I think that's what they're called, like the actual pictures. And she said, well, because this could be a very high risk situation, we don't want you leaving the hospital until the on-call doctor has had a chance to review everything. So we're going to email him and then you're going to wait here until we hear back. So thankfully, they were very on top of it. And I think I only waited like 20 or 30 minutes after the ultrasound. And then the doctor had called their like reception area and I could speak to him. So he said, because I'm so early and because I haven't had a missed period, that they can't see anything. 
he said it looks like there's um what he'd say it looks like there's a like ruptured cyst which is common um but he said i need you to come back on friday to have your levels your progesterone and your hcg checked which is normal process to go through during any type of pregnancy really especially if you've had a miscarriage like that's a very routine thing to do so thanksgiving jeff and i didn't do anything actually i think jeff went to his aunt's house for like an hour just to like pop in and say hey but he just told his family i wasn't feeling well and i stayed home um, cause I was just too upset to go anywhere. So that was Thanksgiving. And then the day after Thanksgiving, I went in first thing Friday morning, got my blood drawn. And then, and then the doctor that I had spoken with originally had called me back and waiting for that phone call is, feels like an eternity. It really feels like an eternity. So anyways, he had called me back and he said, well, um, your levels have actually tripled since we drew your blood on Wednesday. He said, that's an extremely good sign. He said, at this point, I do not have any concerns, but I want you to follow up with your OB the coming week. I think it was maybe a week and a half when I saw my OB because they wanted the pregnancy to progress a little bit further to see if they could see anything on an ultrasound. So again, like the waiting game when it comes to fertility is the most brutal thing ever if you've gone through it i totally understand or if you're going through it i totally understand where your headspace is at right now so we had gone in i had finally met the ob at the practice that i was originally going to for my gynecologist she was amazing she was the woman that delivered my baby and i owe her everything jeff was with me at this appointment of course she had done a transvaginal ultrasound she was very um empathetic and sympathetic to what we had gone through the week before with the ob tech saying things that she didn't really have the right to be telling us as far as like an ectopic pregnancy like really the doctor should be the one like diagnosing you um for that specific reason so she had seen or she did see Peyton at the time implant right in my uterus where it was supposed to be at the gestational age it was right at the pace and growing exactly how things should have been there was a yolk sac and everything and because I was so paranoid the first trimester after the miscarriage and then hearing the words ectopic pregnancy they took extremely good care of me emotionally and my doctor said like you can come in as many times as you want if you want to come in just for a quick ultrasound if you want to come twice a week three times a week once every other week like i will do whatever you want me to do so i think i probably like the first trimester i probably had like three or four ultrasounds i actually ended up um getting into a fender bender when i was pregnant i was hit from behind as well so the day after because I was so paranoid, um, we had gone in and had an ultrasound and saw the heartbeat and everything like that. So need needless to say, everything turned out exactly the way it was supposed to. Uh, we had Peyton in July of 2018. She is the most perfect little angel ever. But I think the biggest lesson I took out of our ectopic pregnancy scare, and if you're possibly going through the same thing that I went through, is get a second opinion for sure because if we wouldn't have had that second ultrasound at the hospital i could have potentially had like a misdiagnosed ectopic pregnancy which is horrible and i pray that nobody has had to go through that um so my number one advice is get multiple opinions if it's not blatantly obvious that you're having an ectopic pregnancy I hope this video was informative or interesting to hear at least. If you've dealt with something similar, I know my videos, especially videos like this, like my miscarriage and getting pregnant on an IUD have been extremely helpful for other women out there. So if you have gone through something similar, I encourage you to leave a comment because I know a lot of us will go to the comment section and to see if there's any similar stories. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I would love to have you join this little community. I started growing here on my channel. I upload videos twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays with bonus videos. 
a lot of exciting things obviously happening happening with baby number two making his debut in two months so a lot of of course baby content like i usually do and then because jeff and i are going to be moving into our new home we have a lot of new home videos and decorating and shop with means and things totally separate from baby type of content so if that's something you're interested in please hit the subscribe button like this video if you liked it and i will catch you guys in the next video bye guys